What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Movie Scene. I'm your host, Chris Giddens. Today, we have the films of Stanley Kubrick, arguably the greatest filmmaker of all time. He had a level of perfectionism that prevented scores of other artists from completing even a single work. And so his filmography is also a testament to his determination and passion. So here are his 13 feature films ranked in order of my preference for them. Number 13, Killer's Kiss. As a fan of both film noir and Kubrick, this was a slight letdown, but there are still some tremendous scenes such as the rooftop chase, which was filmed guerrilla style with no permit. Uh, the movie is also a testament to selling out as Kubrick actually changed the ending to suit the studio, but as a result, he got the financing he needed for his next film and the rest is history. Number 12, Fear and Desire. It's no surprise that an older Kubrick hated this debut feature that he made at the age of 24, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, it's awesome to see glimpses of the master honing his skills and technique and style. Um, if you look close enough, you can see the genius of what was soon to come. Number 11, Lolita. The only post-50s Kubrick that I've only seen once, and I watched it at a time when I was devouring the films of Peter Sellers, so this is just one that I need to revisit before giving a more nuanced response. Number 10, Spartacus. A great movie with some excellent performances, but often lacking Kubrick's touch and vision as he was a replacement director. Uh, also at the very end, the pacing bogs down just a little bit, but it's still worth the watch. Number nine, Barry Lyndon. A film best suited for more mature viewers, not due to adult content, but in need of longer attention spans and a higher appreciation for the beauty it presents. Uh, truthfully, when I first watched it in my late teens, early 20s, I fell asleep at least twice and had to rewind it. But then the second time I watched it, it captivated me, and I look forward to seeing it again. Number eight, The Killing. The influence on Quentin Tarantino, especially Reservoir Dogs, is obvious here. Uh, Timothy Carey steals the show, in my opinion, in his few scenes. I would have loved to have seen a follow-up prequel involving his character. Uh, one negative is the voiceover narration, which was the result of studio interference, again, against uh, Kubrick's wishes. Number seven. Paths of Glory. It's hard to believe that anyone could make such a powerful and stunning film before the age of 30, or that this film is over 50 years old as it looks better than most films made now or since then. Uh, the ending is one which will simultaneously give you chills as well as tears. Number six, The Shining. I've never read the book and so I don't have the same qualms as Stephen King and some of his loyal readers. Uh, instead, like the majority, I love this movie. I also recommend the recent documentary, Room 237. It's an intriguing look at the effect that Kubrick's films have on certain viewers that would make Jack Torrance proud. Number five, Dr. Strangelove. Many would rightly argue this as Kubrick's greatest work, and it is definitely one that I appreciate more and more with each viewing. Uh, it's iconic, as most of Kubrick's films are, and its landing at number five on the list is just simply a testament to how much I love the remaining four. Number four, A Clockwork Orange. Similar to other outsider works like On the Road and The Catcher in the Rye, this is pretty much required consumption for any cool, or wannabe cool, misunderstood youth. I admit, I had the poster on the wall during college, uh, but it actually holds up as we age and gain a little bit more understanding of the disturbing nature that it portrays. Number three, Full Metal Jacket. The first Kubrick film that I watched, and at an age that I'm sure many would find very questionable, uh, when I was younger, like many, I preferred the first half, mainly due to Arlie Ermey's performance, incredible performance. Uh, now I appreciate the first part as a masterful degradation in preparing us for the second part which can then be fully appreciated, for lack of a better term. Number two, Eyes Wide Shut. How perfectly absurd and ironic that Warner Brothers would bow to the ratings board and cite contractual obligations as reason to censor this film, all while certain critic shills would smear this movie and try to convince audiences that it's a bad film. They should all hide their faces in shame, and I'm glad to see it gradually gaining the respect that it deserves. Number one, 2001 A Space Odyssey. My favorite Kubrick, and in my opinion, his greatest work, and one of the greatest films of all time, is an artistic achievement that rivals any other from all of the mediums. And if you ever get a chance to see this on the big screen, 
I strongly recommend that you cancel other plans and make arrangements to attend. All right, that's it. As always, I'd love to hear what you think. So if you would, please let me know in the comments below. And you can connect with me on Twitter and Instagram. Also, I'd love to hear any suggestions on what you'd like to see me ranked, whether it be specific filmmakers or actors, actresses, certain types of movies, genres, whatever you can think of. Uh, feel free to send them my way. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.